Live F5, it's off for review. And I guess the real room name for room three is by New Warriors. Room four is by Masters of Evil. It's gonna be a thing, right? Uh, so let's talk about upcoming patch, which is scheduled for May 10th, tentatively, right? Uh, six new playable characters. Go check out Tana's video. He's got data mines and talks about potential reworks to the Guardians and the six playable characters. Some of them we already know about. Gonna be Cosmo, Gwenpool, Nova, Star-Lord, Annihilation, Stormbreaker, Thor, and uh, Korg. And a lot of people have been talking about Quicksilver just being bad. And, you know, I, I haven't found a very good use for him myself personally. And, and I kind of in the same, you know, camp right here where, you know, I don't have him very high star levels or anything like that. But it's worth noting that uh, he will be used for with Masters of Evil and X Factors for Legendary Unlock in the future, uh, Nova. Now, as far as hoarding for the week, basically only two things to keep in mind is... Uh, save your training orbs for the second and then there's also a blitz event also starting on the second let's go over everything uh right now we have the two blitzes they will end tomorrow and then the same blitzes will start again this happened last week and it's gonna be happening this week as well we got cosmic crucible blitz for dagger and then we're gonna have three events starting on the second uh one is the month-long event for fire whatever her name is firestorm firestar i can't remember her name I know it has fire in it because she's a redhead, right? Feel the burn, open training orbs, and then we have battling and blitz uh, for also. And then lastly, we have the incursion event for invaders. And this is going to feel bad. And I'm waiting for all the Reddit posts to complain about this next Friday, where there's the challenge and the bonus. And the challenge, you basically have to have the new invaders at G15. And the bonus will be G15 and five yellows. Wow, not going to be fun. And then we've got the regular of uh, the events, you know, Relic Hunt, Nowhere Heist is going to be happening there as well. Now, Gold Crunch is real, my goodness. And I just want to read this post because the Gold Crunch has just getting extreme. Like, if you want to take a character from 94 to 95, you know, it's like almost a million gold. You know, going from like 90 to 95 is not quite 5 million gold, but it's over 4 million gold. It just feels bad going to removing gold and to be sliming while increasing the need for 10 different ways don't expect to have people buying new characters no matter how much you make it fomo fear of missing out what's the point still have not put back the 1. million in the calendar they basically just decide they were they're going to take out the 1.4 million in the calendars just because and then they were going to make the cost for upgrading characters beyond level 90 outrageous barely enough for one character one level yeah, they screwed me on World War II cap level up event, close the ticket with no response. Level cap increases. Plus, finally make an effort to boost some other key older characters still in use has drained gold and training materials. Never expect supply demand, expect people to buy both resards and shards. Most will be either, either, or will resort to buying neither and finding alliance at more their pace and say, screw you for your overtone FOMO. I, I, I feel like there's been a pivot in the game, like, uh, they they traditionally have uh, got most of the revenue from like a very small percentage of the players. Uh, you know, maybe like one or two percent of the players in Marvel Strike Force was like funding 90 percent of the game, let's say. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but definitely like a Pareto thing, like an 80 20 rule of some kind. And it feels like recently they put this squeeze on free to play and light spenders and I don't know what the, what the, what the point is. What, what for? Whether they just want this to be a Kraken only game and uh, make the game generally unfun. I don't know. I, I don't know what they're trying to do. Need a sim all for Blitz. I don't know if they're going to do that, but like today I noticed that I didn't, you know, I was able to get through most of the daily activities pretty quickly. And the only thing that took a lot of time for me was Blitzing. What's your surprisingly useful older team? And uh, I right when I read this, I immediately, my gut reaction was, infinity watch and and that was the top post infinity watch uh for me infinity watch inside of cosmic crucible and war is almost always useful and, and that team has just done amazingly well uh and it feels like it has lasted longer than a lot of other teams like raid it seems like a lot of the raid teams just fall out of favor quicker than others and i've been very happy with infinity watch Anyone else not even close to unlocking uh, Iron Fist World War II? Blitz is the most mind-numbing game mode. I agree. 
uh, most bored by a large margin. Uh, why make us have play this tedious game mode so often for so little shards? And then uh, here is a reasonable request right here. 500 cores for five T4s needs to go. And um, it, it's because it pops up. And, and I'm curious on some of these, re, you know, absurd offers like this that pop up. If what is the percentage of people buying it because they actually want it versus people accidentally buying it? You know, if hundreds of thousands of people buy this game and they pop it up, some of them are bound to be, I don't know, maybe drunk or something and accidentally push the button. And then the next morning they wake up and like, what did I just do? And they, how much extra work is that for customer support and just to annoy us with dark practices and pop-ups that we can never opt out of just to have us complain about it and accidentally buy it and have to put in tickets and they, they are doing us a favor if they actually credit us back on these accidental purchases my goodness all right so there was an offer here yeah it, it showed up yesterday and i bought it and um i think for me a ten dollars for five million gold a thousand power cores thousand armory 16 orbs and a hundred armory 17 orbs is a no-brainer uh the issue with this is that it's tied to a hundred days and that may or may not be the best for everyone i did a chat uh you know a poll to hear chat on twitch uh have you ever not logged in and broke the seven day streak so they they added the seven day streak I don't know, it was six months ago, and I asked how many people had actually lost their login bonus, and it looks like 76% of the people said that they had never lost that, and then another 24% said yes. So uh, the reason why I bring that up is that you have to log in for 100 days, and some of the best rewards are back-ended. So like day 99 is a million gold, and uh, day 100. You can see that a lot of the, the best of the rewards are towards the end, so, you know, if this has been an issue for you, maybe that's something to consider. But otherwise, like in theory, if this or offer was just like you bought it and you got all the stuff right now, I think it would be a no brainer. But uh, because it's a login bonus and a lot of people have been talking about, like, is this just to uh, in help improve retention? Because this is the second uh, 100 day uh, offer that they had. And I bought both of them. There's one for $20 that was largely uh, gold promotion credits. And this one right here. Uh, is, you know, I did for the, the armory orbs, right? And then the power cores seemed like a good deal for me, but a lot of people, you know, are like thinking, you know, is this because the Lord of the Rings game is out, which I've been playing every day? Uh, is this because of, uh, you know, people quitting the game? Is this because of Marvel Snap? You know, what is the, you know, they just want us to keep us locked in for another 100 days, which is, you know, a long time, over three months. It is what it is. So, uh, there is a uh, offer here, nothing special about this, but I suppose if you need gold and training orbs and gold and training materials, you know, this is like a C minus offer. There's nothing wrong with it. I, I would suggest saving at least the training materials for an event that we know of, but uh, there may or may not be another gold orb opening event in the future. And then right here, we've got a $5 offer for Captain Carter for 50 character charge for five bucks. Now, I'm not going to be buying this myself personally because I typically uh, stop buying these type of deals, even if they're good, good uh, when I get a character to six stars because, you know, going from six to seven stars is 300 shards. And I just, you know, like once they get to six, I'm usually happy with the six and I just let them get to a seven organically, naturally over time. And it's not a worry at all for me. And then lastly... Uh, if you have, um, the unlimited team and you were able to get rogue and you want to top off the rest of the members, a horseman team, uh, that is $50, uh, for 130 times four charge, which is a relatively good value. Excited about the next patch, excited for the next two playable, six more playable characters. Again, that's going to be Cosmo, Gwenpool, Nova, Star-Lord, Annihilation, Stormbreaker, Thor, and Korg is what Tana is predicting. And lately he's been very accurate. And then also we're going to be starting the new season of Cosmic Crucible. And so there's going to be new defenses, new teams. Uh, it still does look largely cookie cutter. And a couple of the rooms are the same from before. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming. Bye for now.